Hey guys, this is MacHeads101, and today I'm going to be showing you something that's more to do with Linux and uh, servers than it is to do with Mac. Uh, but this will be really useful if you host your own website or you have a home server, or even if you're looking to just secure your own Linux machine. So in this video, I'm going to be SSH'd, which means connected remotely through terminal, to my uh, server. This is the server that's hosting MacHeads101.com, it's hosting my personal website, and all of that and it's running Linux. So the stuff I'm going to show you in this video doesn't actually work on Mac out of the box, but it's very useful for Linux and I figured I might as well show you guys how to use it. So the tool we're going to be talking about is called IP tables and it's spelled like that and IP tables essentially filters all incoming and outgoing network traffic. It's a firewall. So when someone tries to connect to you, it looks at the rules you've set up for it and if there is a rule that allows that data, it'll allow it. Otherwise, it'll block the connection, basically. So this is super useful for a server if you have stuff running and listening on ports that you don't want people to get access to or anything like that. So let's go ahead and I'm going to show you how to show all the current rules that you have set up with IP tables, which by default will be none. So you can use IP tables dash capital L to list rules. Um, and I suggest also using dash lowercase n because that will prevent it from doing reverse DNS lookups, which can make it a lot faster if you have a lot of rules. Uh, and it looks makes the output look prettier. So right here you see it says chain input and then here's some table headings, chain forward table headings, chain output table headings, but there's no actual entries here. These are just table headings. So um, this is because I don't have IP tables configured with anything right now. Now the way IP tables works is there are different chains that traffic goes through and what happens is it gets a packet from a remote host and if it gets a packet it'll throw it to the input chain and it'll do the first rule you have set and if that doesn't match anything it'll do the second rule etc and then it'll go all the way down and if it doesn't match any rules it'll just do the policy which is right now except because it's set up to just let all traffic through right now. Uh, so Right now I'm going to add a rule which allows any incoming traffic from localhost. Uh, localhost, obviously you want this machine to be able to talk to itself over the network. Once we set up the policy to be drop, uh, that'll be very important. So I'm going to go ahead and type IP tables dash A input dash I low dash J accept. So dash A means append. It means add the rule to the end of the current chain or the chain that you specify. Input is the chain that we're adding this rule to. Dash I specifies the interface which is low because we, we want the local interface only to be affected by this rule. And dash J is what do you want to happen? It's the target of this rule and we want it to accept all traffic. So I'll hit enter and now I'll do our list again and you see here's our one rule that we've added and it says accept and it says all. It doesn't say the interface that we set this for, but um, that's just because it's not showing that in the list, but it does know that the interface is localhost. So now that we've set up this pretty much useless rule right now, because it's already set up to accept all traffic, let's go ahead and add one more rule to uh, accept all traffic from, let's say, SSH. So IP tables dash A input dash P TCP dash dash d port 22 dash j accept and what will this do well it'll append a rule just like our last command to the input chain dash p specifies the protocol we want to allow we want to allow tcp connections which is what ssh uses uh, dash dash d port is the destination port of the connection which if it's an incoming connection the destination port will be the port on the server that we want to allow it on which is 22, that's the SSH port, and dash J accept is once again our action to accept. And if I list again, you see here's our new accept rule, TCP, and it'll allow TCP destination port 22 from any host. Uh, now that's important, and if you forget to add this, you'll be screwed over, because if you're doing this on an external server that you don't have physical access to, your only way of connecting to it is through SSH. If you suddenly block SSH, you're basically in a lot of trouble. Um, now, luckily, my VPS 
actually has an online web console where you can connect to it without any uh, network. Ba you know, if the, even if you set a firewall, you can still use a console with my provider. But um, with a lot of providers, there probably isn't an option. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and add a couple more rules just to show you how I actually set up my firewall. I'm going to accept port 80, which is uh, HTTP, 443, which is HTTPS, and I'll also throw in 13370 because that's the port for our last MacEds 101 contest. And let me see if there's anything else I'm forgetting. I don't think there is, probably. So I'm going to go ahead and do IP tables dash P input drop. This sets the policy for input to be drop. And we go ahead and now if I do the list, you can see, here we go, we accept, 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 and then the policy is dropped. So if none of these rules are met, which they very well might not be, it'll just drop all the traffic, which means now I can't connect to my site if I have some server running on some different port, I won't be able to connect to that server, which is very, very useful. Um, now, let's say I want to delete a rule. Let's say I want to delete this last one because uh, I don't actually want to allow the MacHeads contest. And actually, I'll show this in action. I'll open up Chrome and I'll go to MacHeads101.com, colon 13370, and I'll open it up there. And now I'm going to go ahead and do IP tables dash D input and then the index. So this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, this is five. Indexes start at one, by the way. And now if I do a list again, you see it's gone. I refresh the page, and what'd you know, it's not loading. If I go back and I reappend this rule, it'll load immediately. So that is just a taste of IP tables. It is really neat, really useful. One last thing I'm going to mention, which you should probably be well aware of, um, is IP tables dash dash flush will delete all the rules. Now, I'm not going to hit enter, and there's a very good reason I'm not going to hit enter there. It's that that will delete all the rules, but it won't change the policy. So if I did that, which I did right before making this video, and I screwed myself over and locked myself out of my VPS, um, if you do that, it'll delete all these except rules we have, so it won't allow any connections anymore, and uh, it'll keep the policy as drop, so all the traffic will suddenly be dropped, and I'll get disconnected from SSH, and uh, all that good stuff. So IP tables dash dash flush, very dangerous thing. In general, it's dangerous to have your policies drop if, you're, if your only way of connecting is SSH, so I'd be pretty careful with that. Uh, but IP tables is a very important skill set um, to kind of get a, hack, a grip on, at least very fundamental knowledge like what I've showed you here, because otherwise you might end up having your database open for external connections or something really dumb like that, and someone might mess with you. So anyway... Thanks for watching, MacKez101. Subscribe, and goodbye.